guys, and welcome back to War Thunder. In yesterday's video, I showed you guys what was, in my opinion, the best tier 1 premium plane that you can buy in the game. And so naturally, we're going to move on to tier 2 and answer the question, what is the best tier 2 premium plane that you can buy in the game? Now, mind you, this is not an easy question to answer. So let's put ourselves again in this scenario. You have finished playing tier 1, you love the game so much, you've moved on to tier 2, and you have even more money on the side, so you decided to invest it into the game to buy more premium planes, what is the best tier 2 premium plane to buy? In my opinion, it has to be the D520. Now, it's not an easy question to answer, and this is why. Especially from tier 2 onwards, you start to feel something that I like to call the BR divide, where within tiers, you have mass differentiations between battle ratings. For example, let's go over to the Russians here and take a look at their low tier 2s. They have 2.3 battle ratings. Now you go over to the Germans over here and take a look at some of their planes. They go all the way up to 4.3 for a battle rating. And the reason why the Germans are like that is because the Germans have received so many nerfs to their planes because of the heavy armaments on their planes. So because of stuff like that, that means that if you use a 2.3 for the Russians, for example, you will never see a Fokker with 190 A4. It's just out width of your scope in terms of battle rating. And hence why it actually adds to the argument where it maybe might make more sense for this game to have more than five tiers. Because you start to get this thing like the BR Divide where within tiers you get mass differentiations of the battle ratings and it can potentially confuse players of why they're getting put into matches against harder planes for example but anyway that's a whole nother topic and a whole nother story now just before i get started with talking about the d520 here i have to say it was a really hard pick for me to choose this plane out of all the other tier 2 planes to pick from so i'm gonna quickly go through some honorable mentions of what i was considering to be the top tier 2 plane that i was thinking about doing for this video now, the first one was the P40E1 Kitty Hawk here for the USSR. It comes out at a battle rating of 2.3, which is really nice because the normal Kitty Hawk for the Americans comes out at a battle rating of 2.7. Given the fact that a lot of Russian planes come out at 2.3 battle rating at tier 2, it makes for really good synergy. And also the fact that it has 6 12.7s, it's a very powerful plane. The reason why I didn't pick it though, however, was because it suffers from something that I call wonkiness syndrome where on the stack card it looks like it's fast because of the maximum speed but unfortunately the stack cards don't show you the engine power in planes and it has actually a relatively weak engine where it's hard to gain altitude it's hard to speed away from enemies they can keep up with you japanese planes can keep up with you for example and especially lower speeds it starts to flip out from that wonkiness syndrome and so you can start to do really ridiculous things where it looks like your plane's almost dr drifting in a way mid-air because of your low speed and just the wonkiness of it so because of those reasons alone and also the fact that it can't sustain a lot of damage i did not recommend the kitty hawk otherwise it's still a nice plane to have honorable mention because it has a lot of synergy with other russian planes at 2.3 uh, other planes that i was considering was the boomerangs but I didn't go for them because they're at a battle rating of 4.0, which at 4.0, you can start seeing much higher things at 5.0, for example, like a Mustang Mark 1A, which is a very good plane to take to take on. I mean, that thing absolutely wrecks. But anyway, because it's at 4.0, I didn't want to recommend it. Back in the good old days, it used to have a lower battle rating and it would be, it would absolutely massacre in rounds. Otherwise, it's still a decent plane to have. But because of the battle rating, I didn't choose to go for it. And another plane that I was considering was the F4U1A for the Japanese. It's a very nice plane to have because, like a lot of other premium planes that have normal counterparts within the game, because it's premium, it gets a slight BR bonus. So it has a BR rating of 3.0, whereas the normal one has a BR of 3.3. And 12.7s at low tiers do a lot of damage. And considering that this thing has six of them, it's very nice to have. Flight performances with the F4U1A is very good. But I didn't choose it because there are still, in my opinion, better planes like the D520. And this is why I chose the D520. Although, all round, it doesn't necessarily excel in any particular category. And it doesn't really fail in any particular category. 
it, in, it proposes some interesting features for the British. For example, it has a 20 millimeter Hispano cannon, and although it's a single one with 60 rounds on it, that still should be sufficient enough for you to kill an enemy with relative ease with it. If you take a look at the British at tier 2, they don't actually have a lot of planes to work with at tier 2 from 3.3 and below. If you look at the ones that are available, like the Hurricane, the Spitfire, the, Hur the Typhoon, they have 7.7s, and that's pretty much it. Whereas this one, the D520, actually introduces a 20mm cannon, so the firepower goes up a next level with it. Other nice features is its maximum speed, turn time, rate of climb. They're not absolutely stellar. I mean, there's other planes that have better maximum speeds, turn times, rate of climbs, whatever. But they're sufficient, sufficient enough that you can work very well with this plane. It also has four 7.5s on it. So that's plenty to work with after you've run out with your 20mm cannon. You can still keep damaging the enemy for what it's worth. Now, the belts that I'm going to be using for the D520 is going to be the stealth belts because... They are just the best ones to use. There's no air target belts like the later Hispanos. So I'm going to be going with these ones because they have the most damaging components within them. No tracers. That means I'm going to be doing more damage. Okay, guys, I'm excited to use this plane. I really do like it. Let's get out in some matches. All right, guys, so here I am on a matchup on Domination Berlin. The matchmaking is very good for me. It looks like I'm at the top of the tier with my 3.0. And the reason why I didn't go for the D521 was because, well, simply put, you can't purchase the D521. It only comes out from special events. So I've climbed enough here. Uh, mind you that this is Berlin, and there's two airfields to work with, so... I'm not going to worry about it too much about capping, especially not at the very beginning. What's best to do on this map is to just try to kill a little bit first, clear out the airfields, and then cap. Because if you cap straight away, then chances are you might get killed, well, straight away, because there's going to be enemies coming in, a high amount of them, a high quantity. So if you can try to clear them out first, then that gives you safety to then go land. All right, so I've taken out one enemy. Very, very nice, very, very quick. Gonna take out this guy. Now, you have only 60 rounds to work with on this plane. Like I said, it's not a lot, but it should be sufficient. See, that was enough to take out that guy. Now, mind you, he might've already been damaged. It looked like he was gonna land, but still it was enough. A single belt 60 rounds within this cannon should be sufficient enough for you to take out at least one plane. If it takes you longer than that, then you're wasting time and you're taking too long. You should really try to aim to try and kill somebody within that one belt and then reload it. Another thing that you should probably note is that you should try to take this plane out on a crew that has good reload speeds. Because this thing has a 20mm cannon on it, it takes a little bit longer to reload this this cannon so if you can take it out on a crew with reload speeds upgraded possibly even ace it and your reload speed should be absolutely fine otherwise so i see that somebody's shooting me from behind i'm gonna just dogfight this a little bit doesn't look like he's gonna keep up the chase with me and he's actually gonna pull off so that's fine and i'm gonna probably uh, throw off some little machine guns i was hoping to get last few bullets into him so that if he did crash which he did then I might have potentially gotten the kill. I didn't want to waste my 20mm rounds on it because, you know, he was going to crash. So it's kind of like hit or miss. Take my chances. Yak one's down here. We've pretty much got very good air superiority. Going to turn in with this guy. Missed a lot of my shots. Could have been better aim. They're going to ram. That's actually the best thing that the Yak one could have hoped for, to be honest. Because he was on fire. There's a lot of us around. He was sure to die. And for him to be able to at least ram somebody, that means nobody gets the kill, and he also takes down one of us. Alright, lag 3 comes down. Wow, I'm surprised he didn't actually come for me. He's not going to crash, is he? That's some expert skill right there. That is some expert skill. Yeah, he totally avoided all the fighter planes around him, tried to go for the vehicles, and then crashed because he didn't know how to pull up. I don't know what to say. Alright, so SE2 is all the way back here. I should try to clear him out because SE2 can get bombs on it. And the way that this match works, a lot of uh, domination ones especially, is that you have ground vehicles that go towards the airfields. And if they get on the airfield, then they prevent the cap from the enemy team. So if he clears out our, our vehicles and then their vehicles get on, then we can't cap the airfield. As long as we've both got vehicles going towards there, then that's absolutely fine. I think we still got some. Yeah, we do. 
and they still got some as well. I could actually clear out those vehicles if I wanted to. So anyway, I'm climbing up here because I just always, after every encounter, I want to make sure that I have an altitude advantage over everyone, and that I always have speed when I'm in going into an engagement. That allows me, if the worst comes to worst, that I can just speed away if things are getting kind of hairy on my side. So five kills, working out really well. I'm going to start flying away off into the distance, actually away from the combat or away from the enemies. I see that nobody's behind me, so I'm going to start turning in. I look at the leaderboard, and I see that I'm first place right now. Second place is guy who's died twice with five kills, so I think I should still be able to lead the leaderboard quite with relative, e relative ease. Because I have a feeling that this guy at second place is probably going to keep on dying. And now this Yak-7 is clearly going to be trying to land. Now this is awkward. I have to really make sure that my shots count here. And luckily I did set him on fire. However, it might not be quite enough. I need him to die. And the reason why it was awkward was because of my approach. There's not much I can really do about that. Unless I want to flip on over and then just do a, a half loop into his... Oh my god! Whoa! That was a bad demonstration. Almost crashed. A half loop to make sure that I get behind him. Make sure that whenever you demonstrate things that you're not going to crash into the ground when you're trying to do such demonstrations. But anyway, it was awkward <laughs> because my approach was just down towards him and then I have to make a full turn. So all my shots really had to count uh, if I wanted to kill him in time before he capped our airfield. So there's a Chica right here. Critical hit. I'll take it. Gonna turn in on him because a lot of my teammates are going for it. Uh, relative safety here. I know that there's some other enemies off to the side, could have gone for them, but I chose not to, just because I want to make sure that I have my teammates around here in safety, and now I can reassess the situation, take a look at what's going on, got 7 kills, gonna climb up, see a lag near to my side here, just using my raised flaps because I'm going in a straight line, gonna be engaging now, probably gonna lower my speed, just so that I don't shoot him, control this a little bit, and there we go. Finish him off nicely, repairing, or reloading, rather, straight after the engagement because I know that there's no other enemies around me, and that gives me enough time to make sure that the next engagement that I go into, I will have enough ammo for that next engagement, which is most likely going to be on these guys over here. Now, there's a P-26 and a MiG-3 that are going around and around in circles, like a merry-go-round, trying to go for this one enemy, or uh, my ally, rather. And so I'm going to unleash onto the MiG-3 because he's the closest target. The P-26 would have been uh, very easy to kill. And if I was really, really greedy, then I would have gone for the P-26. Made sure that he died. And then I would have gone for the MiG-3 because I know I would have had enough time for it to go for him. But anyway, I'm going to go for this guy now. Did a little bit of a uh, barrel roll there to make sure that he overshot because he's not throttle controlling at all. And a guy's on me. So luckily this MiG-3 did not continue that turn. If he did, then that would have put me in a little bit of an awkward position because there would be a biplane turning with me. But luckily he didn't. So I can just keep on going in a straight line. Lag 3 was behind me. And now I can outspeed this P-26. So I'm just going to reload. Probably gain a little bit of altitude here. Lag is... what is he doing? Is he going to come for me? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go back into engaging. Lag 3 is going to break off. I'm probably going to go for the P-26 because he's a really easy kill. Once I get him, then I can go for the lag. I have a feeling that this guy who's going for the lag right now is going to take a little bit more time to do it. To kill the guy. So I killed the P-26. Now I've got enough time to go for the lag. I've got 19 rounds to work with here. Got to be a little bit more conservative with my ammo. Make sure that my shots line up. That's something. Not quite a finisher though gonna keep on leashing. Unfortunately, it's not my kill though. I've got 11 kills here and I take a look at the top. Okay, it looks like our airfield, they have the airfields capped. It's not the end though because we still have more points than they do. So I still have time to do something about it. I-15 just sitting here on the ground. If he's not killed by, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say if he's not killed by the others, then I'm gonna kill him. Probably should have gone for the other enemy that was closer, but because these guys were so close to each other, then, you know, whatever. Okay, I have to make sure that I don't shoot my ally. There we go. Woo! Gotta really work around your allies sometimes. What is that? I-15. Okay. Gonna turn around on him. And I should have my cannon rounds just in time. 
Nice thing about the reload speeds, making sure that I have maximum reload speeds. All right. I just need to clear out all these planes before I do a landing. Because if I try to do a landing with these planes overhead, they're really going to just try to focus me focus me out. And that's the last thing that I want, to just die uh, straight away. So, okay, my teammate's going to cap it. He's going to take the risk. Fair enough. I was going to say if nobody tries to cap it, then I was going to take the risk myself. There we go. All right, taking down another guy. Nice feature about the belts is that they have high explosive rounds and then there's also AP rounds, so getting pilot knockouts is really easy. We've capped that, that's fine. I'm thinking of actually going towards that airfield down there to try and cap it just so we can finish the game. Because I'm getting a little bit... Ah, uh, we should be fine. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Yeah, we've got more guys than they do. They're running out of people. I'm gonna go for this guy. D3A1, don't know what he's doing. I think he's got bloodlust or something in his eyes. It looked like he was just specifically going for that guy. I have no idea. N would not recommend what he was doing. No. He's diving down basically into the lion's den. All by himself. And I don't think he's going to have enough speed to get away. I know he's a little bit faster right now. But that's because of his altitude advantage that he had. So I'm just going to fire into him. What is he doing? He's turning on the side. Perfect opportunity for me to kill him. There we go. Looked like something fell off his rear tail. Looked like it to me. Looked like his elevators almost. Gonna keep on leashing. Man, he's taking a long time to finish off. I'm not gonna lie, guys. He's taking a beating. Alright, I've got 20 mils, millimeter rounds, and there we go. He's gone. I'm gonna reload. Lag's just venturing there. He's got a superior title. Anyone with a superior title tends to be a bit of a better player. Not always, though, because the superior title, I feel like, it's not as special as it used to be. When it first came out, it tend to be that more of the more experienced players got it, but now it's just a matter of playtime. So eventually, once you play the game, you know, thousands of games or whatever, you're, you're gonna eventually get it. I think it's like 200 wins at the top of your team in order to get it. So I mean, it does take a little bit of expertise, but you know, it's just also the amount of games that you play. Eventually you'll get it as well. There we go, he's dead. Gone, 15 kills. And we have both airfields. They have almost no guys left. So over this entire game, I've just been situated here on top of this airfield, just defending it. And it's worked out really well. And no time did I cap. I mean, I could have, but my team actually did the job for me. So they did a good job. High five to my team. Uh, well done, guys. I'm actually going to say, well done, guys. Well done, guys. Let's try a head on with this guy just for a laugh. I don't think we're going to have enough time, though. No. And there you go. That's 15 kills, zero deaths, one kill assist, and all of these rewards. Because I'm using a premium plane, I of course get a lot of lions out of that. So that's a good example of lions and also the research points that you get out of it. All right, guys. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. What is, in your opinion, the best tier two premium plane that you can purchase? Until the next video, this is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys next time. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now we blasting off into the ozone The way we kick it in the dojo is local for sure Though we gave it a rope that's opposed to the dojo Just a captain